Hello, hello, hello. Y'all know there's a Stella girl in the house. You know I'm always somewhere sometime. So today I'm meeting with a young man that I met on TikTok. I saw this man doing a commercial, y'all, right here in Youngstown. It was amazing. He was doing it for GMC. So as time went on, him and I continues to converse. Then I found out that he is a power lifter, y'all, a power lifter. And here we are now ready to speak with Ken Bray. What is it that brought you into power lifting? Uh, it's actually an interesting odd journey. Uh, the job that I was working with probably eight or nine years ago had a free gym membership and the only stipulation was that we had to go to the gym at least three days a week and so to keep things simple for myself I said I'm gonna go every day just to keep it simple and you like this stereotypical guy I went straight to the weight room skipped all the cardio stuff and I started lifting weights and initially I was doing it you know improper technique and everything else but what I started to notice fairly quickly was that my deadlift, which is something that you really can't cheat, um, seemed to be pretty heavy for someone who, you know, didn't seem to know anything about lifting weights. And so I started doing some research online and I found out that just being self-taught within about six months or so of just picking up the weights, that my deadlifting amounts had quickly moved from beginner to novice to advanced and they were like butting up against the door of being elite and so a buddy of mine saw me deadlifting and squatting and suggested maybe I should think about competing and of course I didn't really know much about it and um, so we kind of made a pact you know mm. like hey dude I'll compete, you know, I'll register for this competition. If you register for this competition and, you know, we agreed to do it. I went through with it. He backed out. I went and I competed in my very first competition in uh, right around Akron, I think it was, um, in 2014. In my very first competition, I got a gold medal, set two state records and I think a national record. Wow. Um, First go round. Yeah, and the rest is history. I mean, it, it's just wow. been up since then. Then your birthday is coming up on August 13th. <laughs> yeah. And bringing the international gold medal home. What, what, what and how would that be for you? It would be awesome. Um, I mean, over the years, I mean, I've been doing this for eight years now, and I've been selected to national teams three times prior. And each of the times that I was selected, something stopped me from being able to do it. Uh, one year it was in South Africa, and I just didn't have the, f I couldn't get the funds together in time, had no sponsors or anything to get me to Africa, so I had to turn that one down. The second time it was similar, it was kind of a last second thing, um, and I just wasn't able to coordinate with school and uh, get there in time. And then the third time, I had the money and everything together, and right before it was time to, this was in Estonia, and yeah, prior to that, I, I never even heard of Estonia. Mm. And uh, I got, I had the money and everything, and you know, we we're getting our sponsors, our uniforms and everything in, and right at the last second, I was taking a physiology class, and I got a C on an exam, and I was like, no, I need to, I need to focus on school, and so I withdrew from the team, and then COVID happened after that, and I skipped a year of comp uh, competition. So it was like all these things, and I never got to do any international competitions. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the stars and everything are aligning, the funding is there, the time is there, the training is there, everything is there. And I got the invite for both teams, the North American team in Panama and the world team in Canada, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna do both of them. It's kind of unheard of. They're only you know, a couple of months apart from each other, two international level competitions. But you know, after having missed all those other opportunities, you know, I looked at it and said, it's now or never. I'm gonna treat it like I'll never get this chance again. And 
So my, my question with that is, since you mentioned them being so close together, is there a, supposed to be a rest time that, for your body, or do you, not, do, do you just say, I'm going to do it, and it doesn't matter? <laughs> well, it depends on who you ask. I mean, okay. yes, you know, there should be, you know, after, after a competition, I do have a little bit of a shutdown where I kind of have to just kind of step away, let my body kind of heal up, and, and it's mostly a mental exhaustion coming off of a competition because of all the emotions surrounding it. But um, the first year that I went professional, I did one competition a month for seven consecutive months. So. <laughs> Uh, so I know I can do it mm -hmm. um, just you know on a international level it's a little bit of a different uh, process mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit it's, it's a little bit of uncharted territory for me but in general you know as far as physically I know I'm capable of doing it and it just switches things up a little bit for me strategically but as far as you know, being ready for the comps, yeah, I'm you ready. Going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> On a real personal note, I understand that you are a prostate cancer survivor. So, how did that make you? When did when did you make that decision to come back to continue on? Well, the the the, the cancer story is kind of a unique story, I guess you could say. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, or I should say I got, I got confirmation mm -hmm. of my prostate cancer diagnosis the Monday I returned back from the first competition of my very first professional season. Oh, wow. So I get up, I, I had a biopsy two weeks prior to this competition. Um, and at the time, I thought, you know, maybe I had like an infection or something like that. Uh, and I really didn't think anything of it because I had no symptoms and I was feeling fine. I mean, I was, you know, in national competition shape. And so um, I packed up, went to Atlanta, and it just so happened, the competition was in Atlanta, and it just so happened that the results of my biopsy were due back that Monday that I returned. So I go to Atlanta, I win the gold medal in Atlanta, the, to kick off my season and I go into the doctor's office and I'm editing the footage that I shot in Atlanta and I'm really just the, the doctor to me is just a kind of an afterthought so I go in and she sits me down she goes hey how you feeling I'm like great I just got a gold medal I said the medals on and she goes well you have cancer mm -hmm. and I was like all the air left the room and, mm. I, and I was like wow I did not I was not prepared in any way shape or form for that because I just knew that I didn't have cancer mm. and so I was like I had just this is shortly after I had gotten a, I had been divorced and you know I was starting my life over and everything and so powerlifting was it for me that was mm. it and I was like there's no way in the world I'm giving this up mm because of this so my next question was well what are we talking about as far as treatment you know because can I still compete can I still do this and she was like well you know you can have your surgery here you can do this you know here's your treatment plan and I was like okay well I'm gonna keep competing mm -hmm. um, and so I went on to do one competition a month because I already had it scheduled out and I went on to do one competition a month that year and my goal was because I thought that there was a significant chance of me dying from prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So my goal that year was to hit a 600 pound deadlift by the end of the season because I assumed that things were not going to go well for me and this was my shot. Mm -hmm. And so that became the quest for that season. So it was. I was just working, constantly training, in school, um, going back and forth to the doctor, all that happening at the same time. And so you were competing while you were in treatment? I was competing while, well, in that, at that time, I was just checking the cancer. So mm. there was no treatment. Um, oh. I was, we were just monitoring the cancer, 
and we made the deal that if my uh, PSA is the number that used to indicate the severity of the cancer, if my PSA level went to a certain point, then we would just shut down wherever I was, get me into surgery, get my prostate removed, and just deal with it. And so it was like this kind of cat and mouse game. I would go monthly to get the blood test to see where I was. And I was hoping that it wasn't high enough to make me shut down before I hit my goal of the 600 pounds. So it's like this back and forth, okay? Next week, I mean, next month I got a competition in San Antonio. I'm gonna be in San Antonio, I'm gonna try the 600. Didn't get the 600. Okay, next month is gonna be back in Ohio. Got to try to get the 600 all the while I'm checking my blood. And it all kind of went storybook and I hit my 600 the second to last comp of the season and then that December had the surgery and the surgery was a success because you're uh, here because <laughs> I didn't die spoiler alert <laughs> and so but yeah so all of that was happening while I was kind of rising in the national rankings and kind of making my name my making a name for myself as a as a power lifter and um and it was like a, a storybook year. It was the hardest I'd ever worked, the most meets I had ever done, most meets that anybody had ever done in kind of that amount of time. Um, and it was awesome. And then for five years, yeah, for five years after the surgery, nothing. And then my PSA started to gradually rise back up again. Mm. And so this past summer, um, they got back to a point where we needed to do something about it again and um, you know I no longer had a prostate so removing my prostate wasn't an option it was already gone and so we decided to move forward with radiation treatment mm -hmm. so last year this time I was undergoing radiation treatment while in medical school and uh, so my day was get up at 7 in the morning, go to the hospital, get my treatments, and then go to class, and then go to the gym to train. And it was like that for two months straight. So how excited are you to be leaving to go to Panama soon? I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. um, but this is what I wanted. Um, and it, it's... It feels weird because, you know, I'm me. I'm, you know, in my body, in my head, I'm like, I'm me. But then outwardly, I'm the number one uh, ranked power lifter in the country. I'm the number two in the world. Somebody came and took the number one spot from me. Mm. <laughs> but I'm the number two in the world. And so I have to, we're gonna be flying down to Panama and I'm going to be competing against the guy who's the number one guy in Panama. And- Go on and bring it back. I that is absolutely the, the that is absolutely and, and it's and it just so happens that it's right it's my birthday weekend is it's when I'll be down there so it'll be my first international competition it's my birthday weekend and um, you know it's going into a competition you know I you know I can pull up the stats and the the, the tape so to say on the on my opponent to kind of get an idea where his strengths and his weaknesses are and put together my strategy going against him. And this guy in Panama, he's a mystery. Like, all I have are numbers, but I don't know anything about his lifting style. And best I can see is, is what his weakness is, is his weakness is my strength. Uh, he's, he's weakest in the deadlift, you got and that's this. my strength. And look, look, you got this. <laughs> you got this, yeah. Well, I want to thank you so very much for giving me the opportunity to talk with you and meet you in person. And, and now I can say I have met the man, Mr. <laughs> Ken Bray, the power lifter, the actor, the bunny man, the flamingo man, I, all of those good things. So I thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. And eSport for hosting and allow a sporter. I always leave off the A. And I thank you so very much for giving me this little bit of time. And you've been amazing. Thank you so very much much and again y'all y'all know Stella is always somewhere all the time thank y'all bye